Good morning, everyone. So today on the live stream, I have my good friend, Melly Lee, who is doing some incredible stuff. And now I'm going to switch a two shot of us. Mel, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. I'm good. Um, still judging your background. Yeah. So me entertained. So let's talk about that. What What in my background is like um, sticking out for you right now? Oh, we can talk about this. So yeah. First, you got monitors growing out of your head. I think that's a <laughs> tissue box and a closet door, or maybe it's an air condition over to your right. You got a, 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 a precarious looking group of bottles next uh -huh. to, I think, toilet paper or uh, <laughs> paper towels. Yeah. Um, there's this red thing growing out of your left arm that's kind of strange. Yep. Yeah. That's just, <laughs> you know, it looks like you also. It also looks like you have a beautiful concrete wall over to your left, which yeah. might be more visually appealing or at least less distracting and making you wonder what is that red cup underneath the monitor that says 901 right now. That's so funny. You know, you know what's funny? Like I'm, I'm shooting the live from my DSLR and you're yeah. seeing my FaceTime um, computer, which is way wider, right? So yeah. no yeah. one, no one knows what you're saying, and they like, oh, Tony's got a nice little setup, and you're like, no, it's messy over there. Got a bunch of stuff, so I absolutely <laughs> love it. But um, no, thank you for joining. Uh, Mel and I go way back, um, college days. So she shot a photo of me. It says little Tony Lee, tiny Tony Lee. I forgot what it was, but ever since then, I think we've been. Uh, pretty close kept in touch um and then you know when i'm seeing something on instagram and she's doing something called facetime photography um i actually thought she might have started but she corrected me saying like someone else did i'm just doing it consistently but i found it inspiring so um first mel uh introduce yourself to everyone and then um talk about this facetime photography oh. hey guys i'm Melly. i've known tony for forever we were actually in the same like journalism program right yes we were i think so like you yeah, you were writing at the time and I was doing photography and that was a long time ago, maybe like 10 plus years. So I spent the last eight years working as a full-time freelance photographer and currently I'm up in the Bay working for a tech company as a retoucher and I'm um, still doing photography on the side, um, like on the side of the freelance project. But then, you know, everything kind of dropped <laughs> as of March. Nothing exists anymore for freelancing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I had a friend reached out to me. He's like, oh, have you seen like these... Like, I think it was like she sent me an Italian photographer. I was like, oh, yeah, some people are doing like really cool things over FaceTime right now during like this time of quarantine. Mm -hmm. And initially, my thought was, that's stupid. Why would I want to <laughs> take a screenshot of a video call? That sounds dumb. But then, you know, like, I, just given the times, just kind of being open to things, like, well, like, why not? Let me just, let me just try it. Worst case scenario, like, both of us look stupid. And we, I get to spend like half an hour of time, like, catching it with a friend. And best case scenario, catch up with a friend, make something cool. Um, so we ended up like just trying, just shooting in her, um, her shooting around her apartment. I just told, asked her like, okay, I think I, this will work. Let me know when you have great light at your place. Um, so something next to a window, interesting shadows, shot around her, sh shot around her apartment. Um, and it ended up yielding like pretty awesome results. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, this is working. Um, let me hit up another friend that like uh, that I know is also a creative collaborator, a dancer type. So like, hey, you want to try this thing with me where we just take photos over FaceTime? And uh, I guess like just that open collaboration was starting to really make things that were interesting um, or just people are just bored enough to want, want to try, try something just absurd as like FaceTime photography. Mm -hmm. So from there, it just kind of snowballed where um, at one point, um, one of my old friends that one of my old friends that I used to live with, I hit him up to like, hey, let's let, let's try this stuff. And then his brother and his roommate hit me up. And I guess they got jealous. Cause yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I, I went in on this. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So th I, the first time it caught my eye was I think I was looking at your stories and I think it was a spatula that you were using <laughs> to create light effects. And I'm like, that shit is bonkers. And then I found out it was like FaceTime photography. So, you know, um, as a photographer, what's some of the interesting things that like, that you're like, wait, I don't have this. So I got to uh, like rethink how do I get the shot that I want? Like, what are some of those things that happen? And like, what you kind of learned from that process? Um, if anything, right now, I feel this is turning me more into like a director or DP. Mm -hmm. Um, in that role because traditionally on set directors never touch cameras dps rarely touch cameras you just kind of decide the shot mm -hmm. so with this it's like been a big process of letting go because all of a sudden i can't control lighting i can't even really 
like touch the model or yeah. touch the subject to kind of like move them into however I want them to pose. Like it's been a challenge also to also direct a lot of the times too. Um, these people that I'm shooting, they're not um, like they're actor types or dancer types. They don't touch camera. Right. right so right. it's been an interesting um, test of communication to instruct people how to move and also where to put the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. No, that's also been a lot of like, yeah, no, uh, sorry. Uh, that's a very interesting point because I think in quarantine is a lot of people that are fortunate enough to work from home. They're learning a lot of new things about their jobs and processes and as communicators, what they've taken for granted and what they're um, now going used to. I think the people that I've seen like success stories or thriving in this time um, historically have been very good with words or very good with, um, um, I guess, like personal communication. Um, to be able to ask for things. So um, it's funny that like in my profession where a lot of conversations needs to happen, a lot of presentations needs to happen. So naturally I have some of that instincts. In your profession, I think a lot of people wouldn't have thought like that would have been something key or something that would help you do do well. And you're saying now is just kind of like, oh, this is like something new that I'm adapting to and it has really made a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So... Like- yeah, uh, let's talk about some of the people that you got to work with. I'm going to um, switch to um, looking at your feed on the live stream. And then um, talk to me something about memorable um, that you you did from a shoot. And I'll just go over to that one and then like show people what the pictures look like. Uh, just to confirm the recent ones with the, uh, uh, with the FaceTime photography, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, funny one, I... Well, let's see. Let's see which one. Which one? Which one can we go through? Um, let's talk about this one. Then. Okay, I will scroll to that one. Okay, opened it up. Yeah. So this is a fr- um, this is a I guess a series of images of my friend Linda Dong. Mm-hmm. She's a content creator based in uh, British Columbia, and she's a genius because I like she's also really funny. She's really quirky and. I've, because like we're friends and we have that relationship like oh this is a type of person who'd be willing to try this with me yeah and so we're just like bouncing around ideas and she's and she's the one who kind of opened the idea to like spatula photography if you will but she's <laughs> yeah. like oh have you heard of toilet paper photography <laughs> so that circle that she's like being spotlight with yeah that's shining a flashlight through a toilet paper roll and no, it at a wall i love it i, I like, the last picture is exactly that setup yeah that's so, so like, crazy. Like that. I think that was kind of one of the like, um, I guess one of the, like a turning point for me mm-hmm. in a sense where it's like, oh, okay, like not only do, I don't have to just rely on a window or like window blinds, we can actually manipulate household items yeah. to try to create some kind of lighting effect. And not to the extent of doing something like on a professional or commercial level, but just something that just evokes an emotion, something mm-hmm. that like just makes you feel something for, for lack of better words. Yeah. Because just, a lot of it too is like working with certain constraints is like what's in the what do I have in the house what can I use to support the camera like even you for instance you're sitting on a spam cam right now <laughs> yeah. um, just so I can get my my iPad to a certain level mm-hmm. um but like uh, on a polar opposite example um if you want to show them this one yep um this is one of my musician friends out in Atlanta which is another awesome thing about this whole FaceTime photography yeah um, is that I can be anywhere and photograph any of like my creative my creative friends anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. which is, um, which is uh, it's pretty impressive to me that I've photographed and created more portraits in the last two weeks than I did yeah. last year. No, um, it's funny you mentioned that because like for me, right, like I haven't posted anything on Instagram or just content in general in like two years, right? And all of yeah. a sudden, you know, I'm like. You know, let me go back to my roots of like creating content, um, and now I'm doing live streams like all the time. So I don't know if it's something about the quarantine, but there's two things that I realized. One is how fortunate I am to be able to um, be employed and not one of the statistics. Well, that makes it sound bad, but uh, not one of the people that um, got furloughed or unemployed or having to figure mm-hmm. out where the next paycheck is. Some of my entrepreneur friends who are doing good all of a sudden went from a lot of revenue to none and they had to figure out what to do. You know, I was very fortunate in that time. And then the second part is that because of that, I shouldn't let any time to waste. 
and I need to yeah. um, do something and I, I should focus on this time to focus on my passions because I can and if I don't do it it's an insult to all the people that want to do what they love but they can't so it kind of kicked my ass into gear and it made me realize that I, I I can't be just like sitting sitting here anymore and then not like focusing on um, the things that I'm passionate about so um, I'm not sure if you're going through something similar but at least from what I'm seeing and what you're sharing about the portraits it's 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 very cool. It's like elevating your art. It's elevating your um, skill, and like there's new things that are coming from it. And I hope that people can look at um, your feed and what you're doing, and um, just just get inspired by it. And hopefully, they'll do something something themselves in the, uh, in the near future. Yeah, yeah. I'm like in the same boat as you too, which I completely relate with. Um, like I'm also very fortunate, like as a creative, to be employed and to be able to work from home. Um, mm -hmm. But like for me, so for my, 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 my full-time, my full-time job, I have a giant ass iMac Pro with a freaking tablet and a giant keyboard. And then I still have my setup for my personal work, except that's been like, like uh, well, that's been just shrunk to a <laughs> tiny corner of a desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so in terms, like something like, uh, something for me that I kind of realized in this process was that having dedicated space or having a shifted environment to switch over from like, oh, I'm at work. Like before it was, I go to an office, go to work, ride a bike, get home, do my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And then now it's become, oh, go to work, pivot slightly and go on my lesser form of, um, of, uh, of workstation. Cause I used to have a secondary monitor connected to a laptop, but now there's no space in the desk. Yeah. So that went to a closet. Yeah. So then for me, like, it was like like the first two weeks of quarantine, it was really hard just to be motivated, be productive, if you will, and almost like feeling this sense of guilt of, hey, I now don't have to commute. I have all the time. I have all the resources. Why aren't I making content? Why aren't I trying to grow? Why aren't I like, why am I just kind of sitting here? Um, and then I actually ended up just playing video games for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we need to we, we need we, we need to self care. Mm -hmm. Um. But then, and then when I came back to my desk, um, it just so happened after I finished um, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, my friend coincidentally reached out to me and, told, and um, introduced me to this FaceTime photography, um, the FaceTime photography yeah, phase that's yeah. going on. And then I just started like, oh, this is cool. I'll just do this on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And actually, I started being more consistent about creating content because it went from, all right, I'm on the iMac, I'm doing work, and now I'm just gonna pit, take my iPad, go somewhere else, and then I can actually like experiment, create. Um, and then that was for me, it was just like, oh, this is something I need to function. I need to have a dedicated, I'm going to be here to do like corporate work, to do like, I don't know, like whatever paperwork I need to do. Yeah. Pivot somewhere else, then I can be created, then I can flow, because it's almost like a, a change in mindset. No, it's funny you mention that because um, I usually edit things on um, a laptop, um, multiple screens using Adobe Premiere. And then when I got the iPad Pro, I started playing around with LumaFusion a lot. And one of the things that I was thinking is like, um, there's so many ways and workflows and there's so many different things that actually come from different workflows that um, spark a different creativity or like um, access to things that you have or like different settings. So um, it's interesting too that you're hinting on something, which is I live in a studio apartment and a lot of people live in a very tight and close space with roommates sometimes. And you know, when they're working from home, sometimes out of their bedroom and then it feels like they're working all the fucking time like nonstop. Yeah. just i'm only working and some people are now starting to get very stir crazy right and i i think it's totally understandable um how have you been able to um and and maybe it's because you've always worked remotely and freelance and did all sorts of things in your career but any tips on people to like what's your personal space when's your workspace how do you like put those hats differently and like work together flawlessly with that like for me right now, it's literally has been changing, changing of space, changing of workstation. Um, so where like where I do corporate work, I'm sitting on a yoga ball. I'm like sitting mm -hmm. upright. I'm sitting like everything's ergonomic. Everything's ergonomic. And then when I switch over to doing personal work, um, I'll like I'll I'll either go to the living room or I'll sit on a beanbag. It's a literal change of space. Um, I know for some people, it's been a changing of clothes usually helps out or putting on socks, putting on shoes, um, yeah, yeah. actually wearing a dress shirt, mm -hmm. just some sort of like, some like change and stuff. Like for me, um, 
I actually become a chronic coffee drinker uh, during <laughs> yeah. this whole process. Um, cause for me, it's like, it's been like a, like I, I, like I enjoy coffee, but I don't need it to wake up. But the process of like weighing out the beans, grinding them up, like that's been a visual key for me. Like, Oh, we are on, we are going to work. This is like, this is the start of the morning routine. So I think just kind of crafting some sort of routine where you kind of get into, like, you don't, it becomes second nature and almost a habit. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm migrating away from desk and whether it be to couch, to bed, mm -hmm. now we're going to read here. Now we're going to work here. Now we're, I would not touch cell phone, like making a dedicated like habit or routine of you know, just training your body that you're going to do this, like you're going to do this task in this location at this time and not yeah, let this yeah, yeah. cross over. No, I think that's good advice. Um, and then um, on that note, let me transition because you mentioned, you know, reconnecting through some of your, um, creative friends and doing this FaceTime shoot, but you know, both of us know a lot of people in the industry and just, you know, whether it's the movie industry or freelance industry or creatives and majority of them have been very hurt by this and uh, everything that's going on. So, you know, um, I can share some of the conversations I've had and then I would love to hear your POV, especially um, from the circle, you know what they're doing or how they're struggling. So, you know, uh, one of my um, friends who basically went from having a lot of gigs and revenue uh, associated with it and when this hit, basically it's like, oh, well, I can't do this shoot anymore because we, um, so understand. And then all of a sudden, all the things that he had in the future, three months, four months, five months, all of them went down. and. And there's nothing he could do about it. It's like, well, I understand we can't do this, or he's trying to talk him out of it. And um, you know, it it sucked. And now he's like, dude, I like I I opened up the new shop. Like, I'm not sure how I'm gonna pay for this. And it's like, ah, yeah, like I, I I'm with you. Like, I'm not sure we're gonna get the um, revenue either by doing the same thing. But now he's trying to innovate and trying something new and try to create courses and trying to sell that. But like. It, it's, it's gone a lot slower than he wants or like it's definitely yeah. not going uh, to um, replace the income and you know there's another friend of mine who had a very thriving e-com business and all of a sudden you know some e-com verticals were uh, making a lot of money in this sense and I've seen that on my side um, especially when I was on the agency side but his business went from just consistent revenue to can't even pay enough on the ads to convert them at a high rate so you know, um, I, I, I see it from freelancers to business owners and yeah, it's, uh, it's very heartbreaking. So I would love to kind of hear some of your stories and some of the conversations you've had with people. Uh, oh, you're breaking my heart right now. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I honestly, like the last week actually, um, so I also been trying to, um, limit myself to the amount of news I ingest cause after a while, I was like, I can't see like Asian Americans getting beaten up. I can't yeah. read any more stories about mom and pop stories, mom and pop stops closing up. It's, yeah. Because a lot of times you just feel so powerless. Right. Um, yeah. And it's, it's hard. I think it's, I think if anything, like, I think it's really important, especially right now for our mental health to take time to grieve and take time mm -hmm. just to feel like, oh my God, this sucks. Just like, just, just get it out. Just get out of the system to like feel it. Yeah. And then. I guess maybe like once you're emotionally tired out, it's like, okay, what kind of plan can we come up with? What can we actually do? And I'm like, there's so much we can get into in terms of like, hey, government, please help. Hey, stimulus checks, please help. But it's hard. Like, it's hard right now. And I think if anything, um, just dep uh, depending on local community is huge. Um, but at the at the same time, I can also understand why like someone's uh, who, e who runs an e-com shop, which wouldn't even require someone to drive through, is not doing well because it makes sense like people are uh, like not just yeah. creators but people in general are like not sure what's going to go on right now so yeah. not, not many people are into spending um you know which is like it's hard like for me like i said like making coffee in the morning that's also has been my excuse my one excuse to go outside to ride my bike because i'll ride my bike to a local roaster mm -hmm. and pick up beans there just to kind of find what it's like a small way i can help out the, the local right economy. right right um um, but it's just like finding little things. Um, another interesting thing recently. So I told you I just got a couch. Yep. Um, my room, my roommate, um, actually found it for free on Facebook Marketplace mm -hmm. because the people that we got it from, they got a couch for free from someone else who was just moving things out. So it's like, oh, this is an interesting, almost communal trade thing. So 
the lady was nice enough to give us her couch, helped us move it, move it in. And then like, you know, just to kind of like a small thank you, I noticed when we picked up the couch for her, um, they had a, a flourishing garden going on. So I was like, oh, by the way, like we actually had extra mint plants. Do you guys want to grow mint in your garden? So I just gave them a couple, uh, a couple, a couple of cuttings so they could grow. Yeah. Um, but I'm just sort of missing like, oh, there's, you know, neighbors helping out each other. Uh, I think it's the little things, but you know, big picture. Yeah. I think the government intervention needs to happen mm-hmm. because it's good to talk about like how can you help out your neighbor, how, support local business. But you know, like if you just look at like your numbers person, like, mm-hmm. like I can't. There's not enough times I can go to my local roaster to buy beans from them that would keep their overhead. Right, right. Like, no, like, for sure. Yeah, from I, I yeah, I think the it, there's a couple interesting headline stuff that uh, I've been aware of. Is like some people are making actually more from unemployment than being employed. So some certain yeah. business owners, especially in this time, because they know that um, one person could be feeding an entire family of four, right? And the fact that they're making more through unemployment, they now have an ethical quandary of what to do with the government loan because if they bring them back, that person's going to be doing less. And the person that's their wife that who may be unemployed, right, they're not able to – they're like struggling way more because of that. So, you know, there's like all these like interesting dynamics that are happening and it's bringing a lot of light to policy, which is I think – an important thing but like you know the most important part is the execution of it and how that's going to be changed and you know that's to be determined but like that's one of the things and then the other part to it is just in general i think how the markets are going to bounce back because let's say all the um let's say everything opens up again i still think there is going to be a huge amount of people that still are unafraid to go back to their life that was as normal and that hurts a lot of mom and pop businesses and you know all all Every single politician has probably said like small bu- small businesses are the backbone of America and all that kind of stuff, right? And I think that's going to be really, really put to the test um, and how the government is going to help to enforce that because let's say you had a really popular restaurant that's seed every single time 20 people. Well, you might have a rule that, or even if you have a rule, say like you can only have like 30% capacity, then that – may not even help you get the revenue that you need to hit that so you know there's so many interesting things in policy but yeah i agree with you that um this just can't happen normally by just um doing um going to your local roaster or me buying um coffee from phil's when i can or rather than starbucks or something like that well i guess phil's is still kind of corporate but anyways like i totally get um um what you're saying there now in your profession especially i think um there is a lot of contract work so i guess like yeah you know from your point of view what do you think is going to happen in the next like or i guess the rest of the year how do you think your your industry is going to be impacting and how contractors and creatives are going to be starting to like pivot a lot of the things that they're doing Mm, that's hard i mean one thing i can the two things i can talk about um i'm not sure if you watch like behind the scenes of the mandalorian Mm -hmm. on disney plus Mm -hmm. Um, so a majority of that was like shot with like actor walks and there's a big digital display behind them with every, like a, I forgot exactly what it was. Like it was like a 360 screen so they could project whatever they want and having, yeah. and be able to, I think, remote operate their cameras. I think technology like that was, is going to, is, is going to start to accelerate. Cause all of a sudden like, Oh, I can just have the actor and I can have the director's camera ops, everything like in separate rooms, remotely uh, taking mm-hmm. care of things. So you could still produce content that way on a large scale. Um, but then you're going to need to ha- actually create more of those types of sets. So you can still, you can still actually tell stories in that sense. Um, I think on a smaller creator level, like one of my actor friends, she has been receiving scripts of people who are just trying to write to figure out how can I tell a story yeah. that's, um, that could be done on zoom, like kind of like how I'm doing FaceTime photography. Right, and, right. and I think it was, um, Bella Hadid when I was like researching like all right how do I actually do this FaceTime photography had like this is actually a a practical way of creating I saw like Bella Hadid did a a cover on Vogue or a um I guess news headline on on Vogue or whatever I was like okay people like the industry's open people are just trying to create so I I think it's a matter of like taking whatever technology that we have that's accessible and trying to do something interesting with it currently I mean you're doing a stream right now I'm trying to take pictures of people on FaceTime. It's kind of mm-hmm. weird, but 
I think a big, I think an interesting thing that I've noticed, at least with um, photographing different people, is that usually people hate getting their photos taken. I don't care who they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like, like actor, actors, models, dancers, like, oh yeah, I hate getting my photo taken. I'm like, well, oh, great, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> um, but it's been interesting, like, um, like people that I would just reach out to. It's like, hey, do you want to um, try to make a portrait with me? Like, people have been very open towards the idea. Like, oh, yeah. that sounds like so much fun. Right, right, right. I think just kind of being in the state of being home mm-hmm. and being stuck, it's like, whoa, this, this is something out of, like, a little a little left field and yeah, a little yeah, different. Yeah. Like, let's try. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, yeah, I definitely am one of the people that hates taking, uh, taking my photos, but it's been weird that, you know, um, through the quarantine, I think there's a stigma that was from, like, video chats or um, just a photo taken or having your public face and... Um, a lot of that I think has gone away a little bit, right? Like, um, you're more used to being on camera, um, and and people are sharing like, um, what their bedroom looks like and stuff like that. So there's been a lot of like, I think that part that has gone away. The other interesting article that I remember seeing, I didn't read it, but it was a headline of like, um, there has always been like how much screen time that we're giving our kids. Right. And, and now it's like, yeah, screen time one screen time is fine (laughs) like um i think like we've crossed that threshold and i think it's so true like um there was a weird it's not weird it's it's justified there was a point when people started thinking like is is this thing evil right like make sure i get this on frame yeah is this thing evil and is this sucking our life is social media evil well now it's been a pretty like you know what i would say is what you're doing is taking and highlighting what's the best about social media, right? Connecting with people, creating really useful yeah. content, having a genuine experience and making people smile and things like that. I, yours is one of millions of examples that people are doing. And I, I think like it's, you know, um, putting something in my profession that I think is a positive thing. Like it's not just evil ads or uh, vanity likes and stuff like that. Now we're doing something cool. So, you know, um, I, I, I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, and it's inspired me. Yeah, um, there's been a lot of people that inspire me, and I'm trying to get all these guests in that have inspired me to kind of redo content, but you're one of them. I really love what you're doing on the feed, and yeah, so I just wanted to thank you and catch up with you and yeah. say that. Um, but yeah, uh, keep keep doing what you're doing. You got a fan over on this side. Oh, thank you, Tony. <laughs> so you can let me take a photo of you? <laughs> Uh, maybe, uh, t- to be determined. Uh, we'll debate that once uh, we figure out what background you definitely want to highlight and don't highlight and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, I, yeah. I'll be down for yeah, it. Think- awesome. But I think, yeah, you know, we were talking about backgrounds, I think actually that is going to be an avenue for people. You see people making like different face masks or ways to make their face masks more comfortable. I yeah. think that's going to be a thing while we're stuck in here. Mm-hmm. Like, I had the graphic designers creating like backgrounds for people. Um, I mean, you've, I, pro- I think you've seen this like in early YouTube where like, oh, click over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's actually like a little box or whatever. Right. Um, I think that's going to be a thing like Zoom, web, uh, like webcam backgrounds yeah, yeah, for yeah. brands, mm-hmm. interior designers design something for someone's for someone's background. Yeah. Like, I think that's going to become a thing. Yeah. No, actually, you know what? This is a um, good way, I think, to end the stream. Um, I I truly fundamentally believe, whether you're a business, a brand, or a contractor, or whoever, that you have to constantly innovate, whether it's your own thinking or your product or anything, right? What And this, what you're talking about, is designers um, – who are now doing something different, right? Like who would have thought that you would put on your resume, design Zoom backgrounds for my clients and people really liked it or something like that, right? That's not usually something as a portfolio piece, but I really think that mindset is very important, that you can't just sit and see what happens in the world. You can be very proactive about it and do it. So um, I kind of actually like in your career, um, because you know, actually, we could have gone through this, and I guess it's totally up to you if you want. But you had a very interesting arc in your career, right? Like you focused and had a lot of uh, success and communications and connections in the Asian American community, and then like you um, went and broadened yourself, and then you know you still have those connections. Like you went through like a whole gamut. I went from now agency side working on very brands, and now I'm client side. Like, what do you think the evolution? Um, as a creative and as person in this industry, what, what are some of the things that you have seen and how that has made you more prepared for times like this? 
I think in general, just being a freelancer for so many years, um, the idea of not knowing where your next paycheck is coming from, that's a very familiar feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, being Learning to deal with the anxiety of, I don't know where, where I'm going to get paid. I don't know, like, I don't know what, what when a door is going to open. I don't know how to open a, a door. Like, I feel I just became very um, resilient towards that feeling. And in a way, every time I felt like I hit a... Um, like I felt like I hit a hole. I hit a hole. It's been, well, this wasn't as bad as the last one, so we'll be okay. Um, I think too, just as like getting older, um, becoming a little bit more financially savvy, having an emergency fund just to prepare for these things. Um, that's been like a very good lesson just to kind of keep me afloat. But I don't know. I'm like in general, I feel like I'm just an optimistic person. So I just kind of think of like, well, I was stuck during. I was stuck in New York during Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, I remember and that. We now. got through and. Yeah, and then we got through that. So it's like, well, you know, things are bad now, but it's not pouring rain and everything's not completely shut down. Things are shut down by choice, not because a natural disaster happened. So right, right, right. we'll be okay. So I just kind of keep looking at things like, like uh, it's almost like that dog in the fire room. This is fine. It's okay. We'll <laughs> yeah. get through this. <laughs> well, Mel, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Um, again, I'm very happy that you're doing well, thriving, and love what you're doing out there. And yeah, we should probably catch up more than just from live streams and Instagram DMs. <laughs> like, we should try to make this more of a regular thing. But uh, thank you. Um, appreciate you sharing your story, and it was fun. Yeah, let me know if um, you want to, if you ever want to do this again. We could do more like tutorial things of how to actually set this thing up. Cause Ooh. It's been a it's been a fun challenge making this work for like every single computer, phone, even like <laughs> Android devices. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, how are we gonna do this? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well that sounds good. All right, have have a good day, and I'll see you later, Mel. All right, bye. Take care. Bye.